Okay, today we're going to tie the raw wolf. We're starting with a size 10 hook, dry fly hook, and it's quite large, uh, so it's easier to show up on the camera. And we're going to start with a jam knot as we do all our flies. A few wraps to the right and a few wraps to the left. And you just cut off the excess thread, like so. Advance your thread to the bend of the hook just about to the bend of the hook, almost in line with the barb of the hook. So when I drop my thread, you'll see that's where we're going to be our starting point. And we're going to tie on a tail to start with. And the tail is going to be made of a, of a bucktail. We're going to use the, uh, the center stripe of an olive bucktail. That gives us a nice color brown. Looks about right. And I've already cut some of the pieces off and put them in my hair stacker, one of these tools here. And then we're going to tap it and tap it up and down until all those tips line up in a straight line. I've already done that on this one. You can see they're lined up already. So I'm going to take those out and uh, use the tips here instead. Take off any excess fibers. And we're going to lay it on about like there. There's one sticking out. Let's get rid of him. About there. You're looking for a square cut tail and tie it in about that position there, about one third of the length of the hook gap. And just do a couple of wraps, lock it in position. Once it's in there, squish it and hold it down quite tight at the six o'clock and make sure it's positioned in the right location. Fluff up his tail, make sure it's on top of the hook shank. Looking good. Okay, take off the tail, the uh, butt sections of those. We'll just remove these. And we'll start with the next part. Now we're going to use peacock. One of colored peacock feathers. And I've got three ready to go. And we're going to moisten those in advance. The reason we do that is that they're quite brittle and they break quite a bit. And the tips break off all the time. So I'm just going to cut those tips off right now and uh, secure them with a few thread wraps. What we're going to do now is build up a bump uh, uh, of the peacock in that location. And it's going to set up space. We can move our thread out of the way a little bit. Um, I'm going to cover up those thread wraps with a bump of peacock curl. And this is going to suggest that it's got the body of an ant or something like that, because it's an attractive fly. Just watch out for grabbing the hook point on the, uh, the uh, feathers. I'm actually going to twist these together, make a little loop out of them, and continue to twist those so they stay together and not come apart. That's looking quite bushy. I move that forward, do a couple of wraps with my thread, and secure that off. All right, looking good. Cut off the excess peacock. Now, in this gap in between the um, lump of uh, peacock, we're going to use a little piece of uh, unifloss in red. It'll be a nice, attracting color. Take off about an inch or so from your ball of uh, floss. I've got some pre-made, pre-cut right here. Just going to tie those on, tightly pull it into position, lock that down with a few more wraps. I'm going to build up a middle body section for this fly. So first I'm laying down some thread wraps to make it quite even in black, but now I'm going to cover them all up in red. It looks great, makes this fly pop. It's always a colorful fly and a nice one to make. Works in Yellowstone really, really well. Catches me lots and lots of fish up there. And that's about right. We've got an even sort of segmented body there in red. We'll just work it this way and then put a few locking wraps just so it won't come undone again. There we go, one more for luck. That should secure it enough. Cut off the excess red floss. Great. Okay, we're back to our uh, peacock curl. Again, we'll need uh, three of these approximately. And uh, well, there's two, we'll get one more. And uh, there we have it. And again, we're going to moisten these slightly just to make sure they're nice and agile. So I just uh, drag them through my lips uh, just to get a little bit of moisture on them. You can pre soak them if you want in water. And again, we'll come back with our three new pieces, tie them into position. Okay, and uh, again, let's start wrapping right there. That'll give us a nice little 
double bump with the peacock. Notice that I'm leaving about, uh, I'd say, a third to a quarter, maybe a third of the hook, uh, and exposed in the front, um, just so I've got space to tie on my wing and this uh, dry fly is going to float. So once these are both roughly the same height, I'm going to advance the peacock just a little bit to the right and put a couple of locking wraps right about there. That will stop them undoing themselves. Oops, put the hook back in the vise properly. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, cut off the excess peacock. Moving along nicely. Now, just for ease, we're going to take a uh, grizzly hackle feather um, and uh, tie one on right about now. And uh, here's one pre-cut. And I positioned it so that the when I wrap the feathers around, the hackle is going to be the right length. About one and a half size, the hook gap. The hook gap's over here. We want it one and a half size of that. Um, don't you use the butt sections, just the nice middle section and the tip. And um, often we'll, uh, we'll brush them down the wrong way like this, make them all stick out nicely, like a herringbone. And then tie in right there where we didn't uh, mess with that last one. Move those out of the way, tie that into position. Good. Cut off that little tip, we won't be needing that piece. Great. Now we're going to need that feather a little bit, that's why we're just tying it on right now. But next we're going to tie on something called the polypropylene floating yarn. This is bright yellow. I've already uh, cut a piece of that ready to use. It's right here. And we're going to lay that on top and just tie it down right about there. We're twist it slightly, like so, and we're going to do another locking wrap diagonally there. It's going to act like more like a delta wing, like this. And we've got wraps on both sides. Now we're going to lift them upwards. We're going to do a little wrap right around there, too. And this will secure everything and give us our two wings to play with. And also have a strike indicator sort of top to it as well. So it looks like all those are positioned nicely. Now what we're going to do is wrap this feather behind the uh, polypropylene floating yarn and uh, put some uh, buoyancy to this fly. So I'm seeing it start to fluff up and get quite bushy, which is going to support its weight. I'm going to slide this one forward and do a locking wrap in front. We still don't have enough feathers on there to make this fly float, so we're going to cut off the excess in front and get another feather and tie that one on. Just going to cut off the bottom section, we'll never need that anyway. And uh, I'm going to just brush these fibers back the wrong way, like a herringbone. It's going to make them a bit more fluffy and stick out more and give us more buoyancy. And then right there where we didn't fold them, that's where we're going to tie them in place right about there with a loose wrap to start with. Lock it in and we come in and cut off the tip. We won't be needing that. And we're going to palmer this in front of the feather too. This will give us our nice bushy look to this fly and buoyancy when it starts to float. I'm just stroking it back as I go forward to make sure we build up some fuzzy head that will support the body weight on the little fibers of the feather. Now there's a slight problem with this fly, it has a tendency to uh, wrap close to the eye of the hook. Uh, so we're going to need a slightly different finishing tool. Um, but what we first we need to do is uh, tie off the fly. Remove the uh, butt section of the feather. And to get our fly to fish properly, we're going to use a half-inch tool. It's going to wrap that around and slide that off over the eye. So there's a couple of things for us. It uh, brings back the uh, hook, the point of the eye of the hook, and we can see it. And then everything locks everything out of the way, and makes it nice and tidy, nice and tidy.
do that a few wraps like so like in that now we can cut off the excess thread and oops we've got a little bit of a unwrap going on there but that's fine we'll just trim that off and now we're going to trim the uh, wings we want the wings to be uh, roughly uh, same height as the um, hackles we just tied about there is going to be our height make it visible and uh, that's going to be our lower wolf <laughs> 